Hi everyone, it's Gareth Hudson here from Solid Tech. I just wanted to give everybody a real quick example to show everybody how feature statistics is quite useful. Uh, we teach feature statistics in the uh, SolidWorks uh, Solid Tech Foundation training course. Uh, with a very simple little part, it's not that exciting, you can't really see very much happening, but the part that's a little bit more complex, it is quite useful. What I can see here is the total rebuild time of this particular part is 13.95 seconds. So that's a considerable amount of time to rebuild these 52 features. Um, if I just do a control Q rebuild, which is a forced rebuild, uh, I can see that I'm waiting, I can see down the bottom here 57 and 64, sketch 69, and it's done. Alright, so that's reduced the rebuild time to 9.91 seconds. So that's basically what I can consistently expect the rebuild time to be. Um, if you had a part that took 9 seconds to rebuild every time you were to rebuild it, you would find it quite frustrating and quite slow. What this does is this orders uh, the feature that takes the longest amount of rebuild time and puts it up to the top of the tree. It shows you uh, in percentage of time and also the time in seconds. So as I click uh, Cut Extrude 8 here, it shows me Cut Extrude 8 on the design tree. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to Cut Extrude 8. I'm going to go ahead. First thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit the sketch of this as well. Straight away what I notice is even just trying to edit the sketch of that particular feature, it takes quite a long time to edit the sketch. What I notice in this sketch straight away is there's a lot of sketch relations. So I can turn those sketch relations off, that's going to speed things up a little bit. But the other thing is I notice I've got quite a simple little sketch here, but this sketch has actually been patterned across in lots of different directions so across uh, to the top and then also across to the left hand side here now it's my preference never to use sketch patterns certainly in this instance you'd be better much better off using a feature pattern rather than a sketch pattern okay uh, the other thing that I want to do is just come back to this extrude and I'm just going to edit the actual feature itself okay and again you can see quite a considerable uh, delay in just getting in there to try and edit that feature and see what's happening. Uh, it's just a simple little cut extrude feature, so just cutting this shape downwards. It's actually an offset from surface end condition, so it's cutting downwards from this top, uh, from the sketch plane there that you can see, cutting downwards, and it's offsetting from this surface, which is called surface offset outer, which is actually this uh, outer surface here. Now this outer surface is actually what I would call a compound curve or, or a complex curve. Now because this is an internal uh, cut, there's no reason for that to really be um, you know, cutting down and offsetting from uh, an actual uh, composite curve or a complex curve. So what I'm going to do, um, I've actually got an example here that I've already fixed, but the point of that whole exercise was that the feature statistics allowed me to find out which feature was contributing you know, nearly 50% of the rebuild time. So I can potentially uh, interrogate that part and go in and, and try and find how I can reduce that rebuild time. Uh, if I come into one here that I've, that I've fixed, okay. So if I run the, uh, if I do a control Q now, now keeping in mind I've only fixed just the one feature, I could go through and fix a whole lot more. Just doing a control Q, checking the rebuild time. So the rebuild time's gone from nine seconds down to five seconds. Um, and I've, I've only fixed the first feature here. I could work my way further down this part and obviously go through in here and, and fix this uh, particular feature here, which is now contributing 24, uh, or nearly 25% of the rebuild time, which is another couple of, you know, another one and a half seconds almost. All right, so let's have a look at the one that I fixed, which was down here. What was it called? Okay, cut extrude eight. So what I can see is if I edit the sketch of the Cut Extrude 8, what I've done is I've just got the one sketch. You can see straight away, as soon as I go to edit that sketch, it opens up and it edits straight away, which is great, and it's a lot quicker. Um, so I've just done one sketch, and I've deleted all those um, sketch patterns. 
And then the next thing that I've done is um, I've actually inserted a plane here. This plane is actually referencing the standard um, top reference plane and it's passing through that point there which is basically um, you know on that original compound surface that we were using. But this time this plane is just a flat uh, simple plane rather than a compound curve. So now when I do my cut extrude my end condition is still exactly the same except for instead of cutting up to that complex surface I'm just cutting up to that flat flat plane giving me exactly the same result um, well pretty much exactly the same result but taking a whole lot less um, resource and rebuilding it a whole lot faster. Alright so uh, Hopefully that's a practical example of um, you know a situation where uh, statistics or feature statistics as it used to be known uh, is something that is worthwhile you looking at if you've got a part that takes a long time to rebuild and really helps you diagnose and strip some of the time out of that part.